Jason, if you are given y is equal to mx plus c, what does that m stand for? M is the gradient. What is the gradient? I mean, what does it mean? Uh, gradient, what does it mean in English? Well, the gradient is what, the, what is the, the gradient? angle of the line. Well, not the angle, but okay, it's, the it's steepness. Like it, it shows yeah. where the yeah, it shows where the which side it'll be leaning to. Not necessarily only the side; it will also tell me how steep this line is. Can you yeah. see those two lines I've drawn there? Yeah. And it's obvious to see that the top one is steeper than the bottom one. Mm -hmm. Now, in order for you to um, describe the steepness mathematically, you can't just say it looks steeper. You need to provide a firm, solid definition. So what we do is we say from that point A to that point B, or the two lines, we have a certain horizontal displacement and at the same time there was a certain vertical displacement. We call this delta x and delta y. All right, it's the displacement along the horizontal plane and the displacement at the same time along the vertical plane. And we'll have the same for that one. All right, you understand what I've said there? Mm. Yeah. Okay, so now the gradient is a measure of the vertical displacement divided by the horizontal displacement. You can see that for that first drawing, you'll get a, a different type of fraction than you would get for the second one. And that yeah. fraction is your gradient. Okay, that's your gradient in mathematical terms. It's a fraction. It's your y displacement divided by your x displacement. Okay. Now that's very important. <coughs> Bear that in mind. Your gradient is always a fraction. And your numerator indicates the vertical displacement along the y-axis, and your uh, denominator indicates the horizontal displacement along your x-axis. That's a very important okay. thing for you to remember. And then obviously your C value is the Y intercept. That's where your graph passes through the Y axis. Now, if I give you Y is equal to 3 over 4 X plus 2, for instance, 2, for instance. What you'll do is you'll draw your axis diagram and you'll always start at your y-intercept. So you start there at 2. Okay? Okay. And then you look at your gradient. You can see that we've got 3 on the y-axis and 4 on the x-axis. Yeah. So now make a choice. Do we go 3 up or 3 down? Pick one. Uh, three up. Okay, so we go one, two, three up, and now we need to go four across. Now it's very important. Now you can't choose left or right. You must be specific. Because this was a positive gradient, the line would be lying like that. If it was a negative gradient, the line would have been lying like that. You are aware of that? Mm. Yeah. Okay, now since we've gone up by three, and we need to have the line lying in a positive direction, we now need to go one, two, three, four places to the right. We make a little dot there. And we draw the line. Is that it? That's it. So if you have gone down by three, instead of going up by three, you decided to rather go down by three, you would have been going down by three and then you would have had to go one, two, three, four places to the right, or to the left, before you make your dot. Either way you'll end up with a straight line. Okay. Okay, so that's pretty basic.
intercept and you find the x intercept now is that where you say y is equal to zero y intercept and you find the x intercept now is that where you say y is equal to zero no. Yes, is that where you say y is equal to zero? And then, yeah, that's the way I remember how to do it. Yeah, but this okay, is a new that's way. the I third like technique. The, I I prefer this technique. I've, over the years, I've found this one to be the quickest. But uh, I mean, any of the three techniques is valid. Yeah. 